Aloha, aloha my kako. We are soon to begin with our awesome closing keynote. This is such a great thing for us to define what digital space looks like from a Hawaiian sense of place. Yes, even virtually. It is so important to think about how we establish Hawaiian virtual space, how we define it, and then execute it together like we have today in concert with all of you. Just a little bit of backstory. Very early last year, members of our conference planning committee and all of our colleagues at Kamehameha Schools were challenged by our highest levels of leadership to find ways to define Hawaiian virtual real estate. He said, work at designing Hawaiian online space now or run the risk of having it defined for you and you know, have it defined by others who are probably not going to be from here from Hawaii. So we took this to heart and we dreamed about making inspirational spaces filled with aloha, olelo, oli, pule, le alea, mm -hmm. and all the way to this moment. Here we are, folks. So it's at this time that I want to cue in our, our amazing closing keynote address. We are so proud to introduce to you the Daughters of Mao for our afternoon keynote address. The Daughters of Mao are a group of Native Hawaiian women voyagers who sailed with master navigator, Pius Mao Piailu. And we are here to share, and they are here to share va'a experiences and lessons applicable to their lives today. First up is Captain Bonnie Kahapea Tanner. Captain Kahapea is from Ka'alaya O'ahu and is the executive director of Kane Hunamoku Voyaging Academy. Before Kanehunamoku, she was a crew member on Makali'i Voyaging Canoe. Captain Kahapea Tanner was trained by Clay Bertelman and later gained enough experience to become the captain of Kanehunamoku. Her favorite things to do are sailing on Kanehunamoku and gardening with her two daughters, Lehia and Kaya Lea. Eo maila e kapena kahapea. Aloha. Aloha. O hokule akavahine o mauke kane. Ha nau o makali'i he keki he kiakahi. Ha nau iuka i kaua ki puupuu alana i ke kai ha vana vana o koai hai. O Clayton Bertelman ke kapena. O Shorty Bertelman ka hookele. Holo o makali'i i kamoana nui a kea. A pai i ka aina o kokako mau kupuna. O Papa Ete, O Tautira, O Taiohai, O Nukuhiva. A hoi i Hawaii na kai e valua puni kapai aina. O Hawaii, O Maui, O Molokai, O Oahu, O Kauai, O Lanai, O Kanaloa Moku. Au moana o makali i ke komohana, O Mau ke kumu e hoohano ia kona inoa i kona aina. O Majuro, O Koshrai, O Ponpe, O Chuk. O Pula, O Puluat, O Sarawal, O West Fayu, O Guam, O Saipan. Ho o makaho a holo i papaha nao moku a kea i nga moku kupuna hoi. O ni i hau, o le hua, o le ni hoa, o moku mana mana. O makari i ke ali o ke kai o a mauloa kono mo o le loe. Aloha mai kako and welcome to our talk story. Um, uh, by the daughters of Mao, and I just want to sit on this slide here of our picture of our Kapena, uh, Clayton Bertelman. Without this man, uh, none of these things would have been possible in our lives, and so we credit him and his brother Shorty and their deep aloha for their teacher, P.S. Mao Piailug, and it is through them and their aloha that we were able to uh, embark on this adventure of a lifetime uh, to sail our Grandmaster Navigator home to his island in Sarawal and honor him in front of his own people after all his dedication and sacrifice to the people of Hawaii and to voyaging across the Pacific. So we want to start there by honoring them and honoring our canoe Makali'i and all the wonderful places she has sailed to over the years. And so we'll start uh, with uh, my bunkmate, Mahina Poi Poi Paishan, hooey, time for watch. 
Hi. Mahalo ti. Aloha. Aloha mai kako. It's so wonderful to join you folks on uh, this learning journey as we are claiming the virtual real estate. I really love that term. Um, and we know as educators that one of the most important things that we can do for any of our students is to create a transformative moment for them for which they will, they will bite the hook. They will bite that hook for the pursuit of knowledge and excellence. And so what we wanna do for you is just briefly talk through with you the purpose of the 1999 AMO, AMO voyage, because that's exactly what our teachers, Captain Clay Bertelman and Papa Mo Piailu did for us and for the many, for the many descendants of Papa Mo. So our AMO voyage in 1999 um, was, took, us, took us on the open ocean from Kaupulehu, Hawaii, to Saipan for a total of 3,600 miles over a period of three months. And this was, this was an important uh, milestone for our Makali Ohana, for Nakalaiva'a as an organization, because in 1999, we were only four years old as a young organization. We had birthed Makali'i as the entire Hawaii Island community in 1995. And this was the only second open open ocean voyage that we had uh, done as, as a crew and as an ohana, but it was important. It was an important one because uh, Captain Clay Bertelman, his brother, Shorty Bertelman, their entire ohana, certainly my uncle Chad uh, as well, they wanted to, one of the, the first priorities was to honor Papa Mo, like my tita uh, Kapea said. And so what, what we, what, we were able to do was we were to bear we were able to bear witness to a pull uh, to to pull ceremony for a, a a navigator to elevate to polula or grand master navigator and in that sense we were able to see in action the entire genealogy entire genealogy and lineage of navigators unveiling itself, availing itself. We were able to witness, bear witness to a, rit a ritual and a traditional ceremony to ensure that the legacy by which uh, knowledge, traditions, practices would be enveloped, would be honored, and would be transmitted for the generations to come. And we saw this in a really beautiful, seamless way. Um, and so we were able to do this in, in 1999, we were able to uh, take Makali'i. Shorty Bertelman was the, well, is one of uh, Papa Mo's uh, students. He is his first student. He will always say that. We are um, students of Shorty Bertelman, of Clay Bertelman, of Chad Paishan and others. And we were able to um, take him home to Saddle Wall so that his people, so that his peers, could bear witness to the fruit that he had created since the 70s through Hokulea, our mother canoe, and all the descendants of, of Hokulea. Now we have Kanehunamoku as one of its new keiki as well. So how do we become the daughters of Mao? Very simply, we had, we had a, a simple charge, yet a, a complex task. Uncle Clay Bertelman told us, you malama Papa Mo. Your task is to malama him and you listen, you watch, you follow, you imitate. And you embrace all that you can. You, you learn his way of eating food. You learn his way of treating the canoe. You learn his way in which he, he watches the stars, he watches the sun. That was our task and complex because um, Papa Mao is, is, a, is a complex, sophisticated man. People know him as, as a navigator, but he is also an architect. He is also a traditional healer. He is also, he also served as governor. So these are the things that we were able to bear witness to because we spent so much time. And the, the last thing that I wanna share with you is that we are not the only daughters of Mao. There are many. There are folks like Auntie Kanani um, that are that are um, in Hana Maui. Um, Chantel, Artika Chantel. There are many uh, Pomoi Bertelman and all the Bertelman Ohana who are daughters of Mao. 
And to round this out, aren't we all, aren't we all Pula Pula of Mao's legacy? Therefore, aren't we all daughters and sons of wayfinding and voyaging? And when we, when we lay down this legacy, we know that our students too will become descendants of voyaging. And now I'd like to turn it is over to my Va'a sister, Kehaulani. Mahalo e mahina, aloha mai kako, o wau ke ia, o ke hau. Um, thank you so much for just sharing time and space with us today. Um, we are on all different islands right now. Like Mahina said, there are many of us. We are just a few. Um, and we're going to share some of the quotes, um, the direct things that we use, the words, the primary source, which is the words that Mao used. Um, and that's kind of going to be our main cordage that we're going to use to thread um, our sharing and our time together today. So. We're going to be using um, the words that we tether to in our daily lives, um, the lessons that we've learned through sharing some of our experiences, just a little bit. Um, and it's, we're going to tether it to these quotes, similar to how we use Olelo no Eo. Whatever resonates with you, hopefully, um, you can see yourself and connect. Um, and as we think about what is Hawaiian culture based education, um, and what is that Mahina touched upon really is the transference of generational ike, generational knowledge. What is that and how is that transferred? And what does that mean for us as we carry an awamo kuleana going forward? Um, so in whatever capacity we, we join ourselves in this group today, um, we all have a role in the larger lahui and the malamai of our honua to be healthy and sustainable. Um, whether you call it Hawaiian culture-based education or not, the label is not so much important, but the value um, that is instilled um, hopefully will resonate with you through the words of our teacher, specifically Papa Mao and his quotes that we, we currently use um, every day in, in our roles. And all of us sharing today, we are educators in some form, in some realm, which also means that we're always going to be students in some some way as well as we have that continual learning and growth. So at this time, um, please allow us to share some of our favorite quotes. Um, and I'm gonna ask Tita Kainani, who is in Hilo right now, um, Kainani Kahonaele, take it away. Hi, aloha mai, aloha mai kako. Uh, if I have courage, it is because I have faith in the teachings of my ancestor. This is such an empowering um, quote. Um, this manao had um, helped shape me personally. Um, in 1999 and few years prior, as a new crew member to Makali'i, uh, we were very excited to be a part of the canoe, the Ba'a Ohana, and to meet um, such famous people, such as Papa Mao, Captain Clay, Uncle Shorty. And so um, when they provided the opportunity for us to train for this voyage, to train and inter, um, inter island sales, coastal sales, um, we knew that we um, were very privileged to have this opportunity and that many more people would have loved to be in our place. And so the, the, the more we trained for deep sea voyage and for the honor to take our papa home to Satawal, um, this is where the courage part really needed to be developed because most of us had never um, been in the ocean where we, had, we wouldn't see um, land. And so um, as we trained out on the open sea and we trained for weather, um, we didn't really train for sunny coast cruise days, um, but we were trained to prepare for the worst or to prepare for the, the weather that would um, would behoove us to do our best and um, stay safe and follow our leadership. 
And so um, if I have courage, it is because I have the faith in the teachings of my ancestors. That was what Mao embodied. He knew all the pule, he knew all the chants, he knew all the magic uh, to have his island on board. And so by training with him, working with him and trying to kind of stay out of his out of his way, um, I got to witness um, how to um, how to have faith. So when we were out at sea in training and on the voyage, I was never fearful. I wasn't scared a bit um, because I knew that I had faith in my leadership. I had faith in my Kumu. I had faith in the Grand Master of all navigators. And so um, him, that, that teaching helped me in my resolve in the in how I perceive my own kupuna. Um, the kupuna that I grew up with, the kupuna that I commune with on a spiritual level, um, and also the kupuna that I want to be. I want to be um, a good example for my descendants and that I have faith, I, I truly do. I believe in the teachings. Um, I believe that when we trust our leadership, when we trust our kupuna, we trust our kumu, that they will, um, they will lead us into um, the, the right path. And of course, voyaging would be the, the, best, um, the best example. And so when we saw first sight of land in, in Micronesia, when we got to Satawal and we got to see and experience Mao um, among his peers, among his ohana, amongst his people, um, this this idea of having so much faith in your own kupuna in in the most um, reverent way. Um, we got to eyewitness and see that and feel that and appreciate that from our own ohana as well. And so as, as a kumu, um, I, I want to be uh, the advocate for my students to uh, trust your kumu, um, to follow the way, and to have courage because in every generation, there seems to be more challenge, um, more distraction, more hardship. And at the same time, we have the ability, if we uh, turn to our kupuna, if we turn to our mentors and we turn to our kumu. And so um, I really appreciate uh, this opportunity to be part of Makali'i Ohana and to be um, around um, our kupuna, our navigators, our captains, and to serve humbly on Makali'i as, as a crew member and um, serve as a daughter of Mao and um, always appreciate Papa Mao's um, quiet nature, powerful nature, and his courage as well. So mahalo anui. At this time, I'd like to share um, um, and introduce you to one of my favorite teas. This is Ms. Anue Nue Punu, a crew member of Makali'i, daughter of Ma. Wow. Mahalo Nui, aloha Nui Kako. Um, mahalo Kainani. That, that's just a beautiful segue into this next quote. And this quote really resonates within me. And for those who do know me at Kamehameha, you know that I am a, um, a early childhood educator. I'm a preschool teacher. And this quote of give me your sons and um, to just kind of give it context. I share the, the story of when Mao comes to Hawaii and he meets, you know, he's brought here to help to bring Hoku, take Hokulea to um, Tahiti. And because we, we didn't find anyone in Hawaii or in Polynesia that was willing to do that task at that time. And so when Mao comes, he asks, you know, like, who are, who do I teach? Who are my students? And he looks and he sees Nainoa and he sees Uncle Shorty, who are all in their young 20s. You know, they weren't um, older, you know. And so he asked them, give me, he said, what? Give me your sons. Yeah, give me your babies. 
And really, um, it goes down to when do we start to teach our keiki? You know, and I, I heard it multiple times today throughout this conference of womb to tomb, you know, and, and really laying the foundation from the moment that our, our, our babies are born or even when they're conceived, yeah, and they live within us. And I, I, um, I hold this quote really dear to me because I believe in that. Our keiki are magic and our keiki are, are the future. And so when we went to Sadawal, one of the most beautiful things was being greeted by all of these keiki that would come out on their own little va'a and whatever they had, like they had a pareo or they had whatever they could find, the tarp, they were sailing their little va'as in the, in the lagoon trying to come to us, you know, in the middle of the, the ocean at Sadawal. And the confidence, just like how Kainani shares about if we have faith, you know, we really have to, you know, start early. <laughs> the earlier, the better, right? We nurture it. And so this is a really, um, you know, as you can see, this is a task that we've taken. We all are mothers and we all are also teachers in the various communities. And every keiki we touch is part of our, you know, our, their, our haumana forever, even when they become grown adults having their own keiki and for us the expectation is you know start early teach your keiki and um, the urgency back then was you know we needed to train a generation to reclaim our knowledge of of voyaging and um, the urgency the urgency is still here <laughs> you know um, we are tasked with that and with our own keiki you know we see the like how kainani shared there's so many challenges that we face and and distractions with our own keiki and that's probably one of the most difficult is when you have to train your own keiki to do the things that we've been taught and share and so in um for me i have a nonprofit called ko'olau aina momona and we try to really do that is we try to um plug in our keiki into into places vahipana of their own home into finding what is that ike of your own ohana and also sharing this knowledge, because we have a canoe in our moku of Ko'olau Poko, Kanihuna Moku, to share this, yeah, and to teach our keiki, to train their eyes to see everything around them and to create their compass from, from baby. Oh, look, I, I get plenty of time, but I'm going to pass this on. So I, I really want that to kind of stay with you folks and think as we go through the rest of the slides. And... Um, yeah, this is our mo'olelo and we're still making it happen as we go forward. But I'm going to pass this back to my sister, Faileen Mahina, Paishan, Duwart, often my twin because people think we're the same person, but eh, you know. Mahalo to my mahoy. <laughs> I want to talk to you folks about uh, this beautiful, beautiful old idea. Uh, feed the canoe first. Uh, so feed the canoe first is is the physical act. We were tra taught this tradition uh, of feeding the canoe first. So when we go on our watches, whether we're on a short sail, coastal sail, overnight sail, long ocean voyage, when we eat as a crew, we were taught by Papa Mo, by Shorty Bertelman, by Uncle Clay Bertelman, you feed the canoe first. The act of placing the, the, the first bowl of mea'ai onto the back of the bow, the manu hope, uh, really for me was about affirming your intention, your personal intention, your personal commitment to why you're there in the first place. And so when I asked, when I had the opportunity to ask Papa Mal, like, well, I, and I did, I, you know, I, I was a young kid and I would ask him all kinds of questions. One of the questions I asked him, like, why do we do, why do, we do this, Papa? Um, he said, it's, it's the act of feeding the spirit or the essence of the canoe. And why not? Because we, we now have this um, that's old, right? Kanehuna Moku and others and our Makali Ohana and Hukule Ohana made it very popular. Um, heva'a he moku, he moku heva'a, the canoe as your island, as your island, as your canoe. So if, while you're on open ocean voyage, if your canoe becomes your island, aren't we taught, aren't we taught 
don't we teach our youngsters, our keiki, the 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 that timeless tradition and mythology of you, our kuleana as Kanaka, is to malama aina to malama the first ancestor, and if we malama the first ancestor, aina will feed us. It is the same. It's one and the same. So what I want to share with you um, is is basically a real vulnerable story for myself um, as a youngster at, you know, well, youngster, a uh, college student at Center for Hawaiian Studies, Kamakakua Kalani. I, I, I was studious, but I, I wasn't focused. It wasn't until the 1999 voyage and that act of feeding the canoe three meals a day and finding rhythm with this kupuna, this ancestor, that I did, it was only till then that I really found my own powerful purpose. And so when I returned, I did not continue on after the first leg with my, my, my uh, canoe sisters. They continued on. I chose to come back home and continue my studies. Uh, but it was that because of that powerful, simple, simple, simple ritual that I was able to translate that into my undergraduate studies, where then I was focused and I understood the pursuit of excellence for on behalf of Lahui. And I could affirm that in, in a really personal way and in a, in a, a meaningful way. And now I get to do that in all the different spaces. So what I wanna say is that these moments, this transformative experience it has carried me as a school principal, as a, as a, um, as a kia iloko with Anwe Nue and Hiilei and all of our awesome malamaloko ia folks, and now as a wahine social impact entrepreneur with Bye Bye Collective, we get to translate these havina nui that are timeless in all spaces. And shouldn't that be, shouldn't that be uh, the part of the purpose of our education as edu educators for our students? So last thing is Makali'i as a canoe never travels alone and we should not attempt to do transformative, meaningful work in silos. So let's let's continue to be a powerful collective. And with that, I send it back to my bunkmate, uh, Miss Kahapea Tanner. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, mahalo Mahina for sharing that, you know, feeding the canoe, I think, was one of the lessons that really struck all of us um, deep and one of the lessons that we still continue to learn today about that reciprocal relationship between teacher and haumana and how important that is to just put care, slow things down and put care into the things and think about um, what are the needs of your kumu, what are the needs of your crew, and um, so that feeding the canoe is really important. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, Papa Mao's quote that came that I heard a little bit later on uh, after our voyage when he would come back to Hawaii. And he said, I place a stick between Hawaii and Micronesia. And then he said, now you just have to walk on the stick. Yeah, that simple act of I already built the road, the ocean road. And now you, you folks, your kuleana is to continue to walk on that road, to maintain that road and to keep that road open uh, for the future generations. And so um, shortly after we came back from our uh, Amal voyage, one of the things we did ask uh, Mao when we left him in Saipan was, you know, what do we do now? What do we do when we go home? We felt a little lost, you know, we had given so much of our, of our lives over to the voyage because we were fully committed to the mission. And he said, um, go home and share what you learn, go home and share. And so that was really the beginning and the birth of Kanehuna Moku, along with the dream at uh, Halau Kumana Public Charter School to have a classroom without walls. And so we were really fortunate in the beginning years to have Mao with our students teaching um, and they're so fortunate and I know all of them feel really grateful for this opportunity that they did have at that time. And so, you know, here we are, we have this stick that we can walk across and with, you know, today we know there's a lot of disparities in our community. 
We've had this influx of uh, Micronesian citizens to Hawaii. And, you know, how do we bridge that? How do we recognize them in our community and create that link that goes beyond Papamau, that goes beyond Hokulea? And how do we reach out into our communities and join hands together as we continue to move forward in this education in our history? And so one of the things, um, that we've been able to do is we connected here. This is one of uh, Mao's sons, Esaliquipi Placito, and he came to Hawaii a, a bunch of years ago, and we were able to connect, and I was just struck at how similar he was to his father and how his hands and everything about him was so much like Mao. And so we took advantage of this opportunity of him being here and we created this project to connect our communities, to connect with the Micronesian community here. And we were able to um, build this canoe um, and learn from them how they use the natural things in, in the environment to create their canoe. And it was just really amazing. And this canoe's name is Ellen Yorani, that means pathway to culture. And again, we hear this importance from Mao and now his son years later about the importance of maintaining your culture and maintaining your traditions and having that faith in the teachings of our ancestors. And so we were able to bring together um, some of the Micronesian community here in Hawaii through Kokua Kalihi Valley and Ho'oulu Aina and with Kupu. And over the course of a few months, we were able to create this beautiful va'a and have this wonderful ceremony down at Mauliola and bring the communities together. And it was the first time that I have heard since 1999, the voice and the song of the Micronesian people. And it was beautiful because it just took me back to our experience in 1999 and how colorful everything they do are, how vibrant their community is. And um, so it's important, you know, he placed the stick and we can interpret that in many ways. What is that kuleana and how do we continue to talk on this stick that Mao has laid before us? And with that, I will turn it over to Dr. Kehaulani Inos. Ooh, mahalo. Mahalo i kahapea. Um, aloha ho kako. Um, you know, one of the things Kahape I just mentioned when we came home, we were we were kind of lost. We were we were on the ocean for three months. We were in another time. It was almost like going back in time. If we could imagine what Hawaii might have looked like when we were at Sathawa, um, it was almost like we could go back in time ourselves and picture what our kupuna might have, how they might have lived how the organization of Ahupua'a might have been, how the distribution of resources might have worked. Um, but one of the things that stuck with, with us is this quote, stay together and practice your culture. And it sounds very simple, but when you really deconstruct that, it can be kind of, kind of difficult and challenging to truly stay together and practice your culture on a daily basis all the time. Um, so when we were on our voyage, one story that I, I always tend to share because I it's it makes me giggle, but at the same time it's kind of really highlights this stay together and practice your culture. Um, when we were heading to South Wall, um, we were trained prior in our training, the men, the women, there were there was no real difference between what the boys did and what the girls did, we all did it. We were all crew, we all trained, we all worked, we all put in our sweat and our hours and, um, you know, did everything together. But when we were approaching South of Wall, we knew that the women were topless and we knew as Wahine that we wanted to respect um, the place and the people that we were going. And we knew that as Wahine, we were different in that way. <laughs> so in preparation, a lot of the physical preparation is one part, studying is one, but also just the mental preparation of your ano, your lavena, your ways. How are you going to act? How are you going to be? Um, so mentally, 
we had prepared to, you know, when we get there, we're going to go topless because the women there don't, don't have shirts and we're going to stick out. Um, and Mao told us, no, we will not go topless. <laughs> we will practice our culture. We will be who we are. And in 1999, we wore bathing suits, we wore t-shirts, um, and we were to stay true to who we were. And that um, was really great to hear because I think most of us was, you know, we're not, we weren't nervous about being like that in front of Micronesian people, but we think just our own fellow crew members that were the men, that's not kind of awkward. But um, when it came down to it, we arrived at Satawa and we, um, you can see the women here. This is um, clearly, they're so ornate, so beautiful. And they don't have a function for the t-shirts unless they're working, um, which they worked very hard and staying together and practicing culture. When we got there, the women are of the land and the men are of the sea. So when we arrived, we were already different in that way that we were women coming on the sea. So therefore the gender um, part was kind of, it was irrelevant. They treated us as they did the men because our function was that of people who came on the sea. So that was very um, much a highlight too of stay together and practice your culture. Don't deviate. You stay true to who you really are. So, um, of course, we have all of our clothes on. And um, everywhere we went, we went together. If one went, we all went. We did everything together. We stayed together. We slept in the men's house in South of Wall. We, part, you know, we partook in the libations um, right alongside the men. Um, and we thought we might create a revolution there for women's rights, but we we did not. <laughs> and there was much honor and respect. The other quote um, that really stood out throughout our voyage was Mao's um, break the floor. And break the floor is really just dance with all your might, sing with all your might, celebrate when it's time to celebrate, when the work is done, do not forget. Um, to break the floor and make happy. So part of our crew training, even till today, anytime we have our crew together, um, music and dance is just, is an automatic part of it. It's just as much um, importance as learning the skills and um, sailing is is the, re the, the flip side, the balance. So always having fun and Mal loved to dance. He always loved to dance and we were, we were lucky enough to be able to dance with him in many shores um, and break the floor together. So with that, when we came home, um, one of the things that I got to do um, personally was open halal. I became, um, you know, a kumuhula when, when we returned and, and we continue. And just like all of our other tita shared, you know, our keiki is where we want to keep teaching. We want to continue on. And so um, even in a virtual space, if you look in this photo, we have the laptop because we have friends and family on the different islands and we stay together. We practice our culture and we break the floor. So um, with that, we want to just kind of transition a little bit. Um, we shared all of these quotes and uh, we're watching our time. This is one final quote, the canoe has magic. And with this, we kind of want to just wrap, wrap up and kind of return back to what's the purpose of us being in this conference today. And it's really to get back to the base of Hawaiian culture-based education. What does that mean? As some of our titas shared um, the transference of knowledge, really holding on, feeding your canoe, um, so we're going to do a kind of a quick whip around, really just like a one minute each um, to bring it back home for us. What is it that we want to summarize? So um, in 2015, um, I, I submitted a dissertation and the title of that paper is The Daughters of Mal. <laughs> and through that, um, 
some takeaways really was things that echoes Kukahakalao's um, morning keynote, Pilina, relationships. So big takeaways were three that came out of this study. Um, connections, belonging to a group, which is Pilina. The second was um, the values of Kuleana specifically, Kuleana and Malama, instilling Kuleana driving force. And the third was then the actual skills of whatever the contents and content was. So with that, the transference of Ike or the transference of indigenous knowledge is kind of can be summarized in three parts. And some of our sisters talked about this as well today and sharing their quotes. And the first one is Ikanana Noa Ike. You watch and learn. You observe, you observe, you observe. So that's slightly different than now. It's not much talking. There's not explicit explanations. There's not target outcomes that's laid out for you that you're trying to say out loud. It's really you watch and learn. The second phase is makahana ka ike. We learn by doing, yeah? Repetition. And you're not doing something um, for fun. You're actually doing the real thing. And if you got to take out that lay over and over and over and redo the lay, you're making the actual lay. You're not making a fake lay and then you're going to make a real lay. So makahana ka ike, you're doing something that's relevant and functional and real over and over. And then you get better at it. And then the third um, is ho'ike. The third is ho'ike. And by this meaning, some of our sisters talked about this as well. We got to bear witness of Uncle Shorty being the navigator on this voyage. And what, what that really means is that's authentic assessment where student, so he was Mao's student, and this voyage really was his big test, his big assessment is authentic assessment where the teacher then pulls back and the student becomes the main lead. And then all of us got to witness that and learn from him. So the transition between student then becomes teacher and then the cycle and then the passing on, on and on and on. It never stops, which is what Mao basically asked us to do when we came home, just keep sharing. So that which has value, is what gets passed on. That which has function and relevance and application is what gets passed on. So our kuleana really is driven by all of that. So with that, I'm gonna pass it to who's next. Mahina. Mahina, mahalo. Mahalo, that was, that was powerful, mahalo sis. So um, just wanted to uh, offer up um, the manao of feed the canoe or feed your canoe. Um, and so I shared a little bit about my personal, my personal um, story to that olalo. Uh, what I did not yet share was that, so when I came home, I entered back into study. It was from that moment on that myself and my best friends um, decided to establish Pai Pai Ohe'eya and do our work uh, to restore that vahi pana um, and, to the, and to continue that work. Um, and so that became then my powerful purpose and that became the canoe in which I would, I would feed and it would in turn feed me. So very simply, what I wanna um, offer up, I wanna invite you folks, I'm, I'm gonna extend a, a personal challenge to all of you, to all of us. Um, who, is, who is your va'a? Who is your, your va'a, your vehicle for, for your powerful purpose? What are you feeding your va'a? And where will your va'a take you and your students? Who is your va'a? What are you feeding your va'a? And where will your va'a take you? Mahalo nui, I'm gonna pass it off to Kapea. Mahalo Mahina. Um, similar, the, mag the canoe has magic uh, because of the people. The people that are on your va'a is, are the ones that bring the magic. They bring that relationship, that pilina, uh, hold you up, give you strength. Um, and so I want to just encourage all everyone out there to make those connections. Like Mahina said, who's your va'a? Find your va'a what, in whatever form it may be. Um, connect to it and feed it 
um, because there's magic there. Our kupuna um, are there for us. And one thing is knowledge today is free. It's all available. Uh, in 2007, when uh, we sailed uh, Alengano Maisu to Papamao, his canoe, his Hawaiian canoe, he named it Alengano Maisu, which means free breadfruit. And so in their island, the breadfruit on the tree is reserved for the person or the people of that aina. But when the big wind comes and blows the ulu down to the ground, then the ulu is free. The knowledge is free. It's all available for us to access. And so I want to just encourage you folks to make the move and find your va. Off to uh, Anwe Noi. Oh, yes. Mahalo. Such great. Nui um, Nahalia. Yeah. Nahalia Aloha from this voyage. And for me, um, as an educator, as a classroom educator, I think for me, you know, the, as Mahina shared, when we came back, we created Pai Pai Oheia. We also were part of ch the charter school movement with Kekulao Kamakao, you know, and in everything we did, the, the canoe has been our compass, you know, and um, I shared that a little earlier, but I also want to kind of reiterate, like another quote that comes from our Ohana Makali'i is Heva'a Hemoku, Hemoku Heva'a, which was by our captain, Uncle Clay Bertelman. And I know we hear that a lot nowadays, but really, you know, that, that quote alone is that, is that when you come home, the voyage never ends, right? When you touch land, the land now becomes your voyage and your canoe. And so um, I encourage all of you, to find that compass, yeah, to, to create that compass. And one um, thing that I heard today in a presentation by another of our sailing sisters was um, Lei Eli, and she was talking about cultural anchors, yeah, like creating cultural anchors, which are really pinnacle things in the community that you live in. So for us, many of us are students, you know, we, we, we know their community and that how do we anchor them in their home? Yeah, and so it, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to jump on a canoe, but maybe it's those places like Pai Pai Ohe'ia or Kako'o Iwi or places in this community that can ground our keiki and their ohana to continue to live as kanaka. And, um, you know, that's what Mao always, Ma, and Ma, all of our teachers, not just Mao, but all of our teachers really wanted us to ho'o Mao the ike of our kupuna. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to my favorite Hakumele, <laughs> Kainani Kahao Naile, to share how she, her hua of this voyage that encompasses all of us. Mahalo. Uh, mahalo. Mahalo to all my sisters for um, sharing all those things that um, helps uh, reconnect us, even though we're on different islands. Um, this is my contribution to one of my contributions to the Emma voyage of 1999 and it's a it's part of my journal entry and it's a melee that I wrote on board the Coast Guard cutter after I got off um, my leg um, of the voyage in uh, Chuk I, I jumped on the next vessel and um, uh, we had some free a lot more free time actually um, and so this song came out and um, in my way, I'd like to just briefly go over with you. A lot of what's contained in this melee is what you've heard in our presentation this afternoon. And so um, this song directly um, speaks to Mao. It says, Mao, you are our grandmaster navigator. And here we are. Um, we're going to honor you in your own home of Satawal. Makali'i, second verse. Makali'i is the name of our, our Mama Va'a. And she is from Hawaii. And we're heading towards Micronesia over the deep sea. And the third verse, O Mau no Kaiho Oma Lama Lama. Yes, Mau is the one 
who has surely enlightened and helped us to rediscover and to um, find uh, more purpose in the work that we do, and not only limited to Hawaii, but all over Polynesia and the Pacific. He has touched um, many um, of our ohana in the South Pacific, in, in the whole Pacific, actually. And so um, we, we have him to thank for a lot of his knowledge that he has imparted upon us. And in summary, in the last verse, uh, I say, Mao, this is my gift to you. This is for you, Grandmaster Navigator. And one of the, um, the most empowering things about uh, this mele, this humble mele, was that we got to sing it for Mao in his home island, in front of his own people. We, um, this song became part of ceremony. This song became part of breaking the floor. And this song became part of many um, classroom um, opportunities to, to sing about this voyage through the May Day programs, through the um, you know, birthday parties, through the, the school projects. And so um, I really appreciate uh, Makali'i Ohana and uh, Papa Mao. And I'd like to um, tie up our 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 ropes and tie up our presentation today by singing this song and um, asking the daughters of Mao, the fellow crew members of Makali'i to jam along. So please join us and this is our break the floor part of the presentation. I'm going to take you out on the voyage in 1999 honoring Papa Mao. <coughs> Inspirational, mahalo nui loa, and look at this picture of all of them with the next generation safely in their arms. Mahalo nui loa. And so, what a powerful way to show us how the Daughters of Mao are sailing through powerful lives of educational exploration, accomplishment, and most of all, aloha aina service to our students, Kumu and Ohana of Hawaii. Ho Ohano Hano Ia, lift up high our Grandmaster Navigator Papa Mau Piailu. Mahalo for inviting us into your incredible circle by saying if we acknowledge and honor our navigation and wayfinding traditions as important to us as a Hawaiian community, we are all Pula Pula or offshoot of Mau. We are indeed all connected through the legacies of our kupuna. Mahalo nui loa for that reminder and that gentle wind of aloha in our sails. Thank you so much 